Okay, my name is Joseph Shulam, and I am the retired director of Vetivia Bible Instruction Ministry, and we are in lockup over here in Israel for the next few weeks, total lockup, quarantine, and I have time to teach things that normally I don't teach, but I should teach. So one of these books that I want to teach during these two and a half weeks or three weeks of quarantine is going to be the book of First Samuel. Now, why have I chosen the book of First Samuel? Because the book of First Samuel is probably the most important historical book in the Bible. Why is it so important? Because it is a book that deals with a transition. A transition period. Samuel is the last of the judges and the first of the classical prophets. What is a classical prophet? A classical prophet is a prophet who records in writing his prophecies. It's also the first of the real historical books that introduce the kingship, the human kingship to the nation of Israel. It's a very dramatic change, change of politics, change of policy, change of government, change also of the religious structure of the nation of Israel the worship of God. Now, Israel's spiritual welfare is not only in the hands of the priests, but in the institution of the prophets. So this transition period is of great importance. And I'm sorry to say that most Christians don't hear a lot of teaching from the book of Samuel or many sermons from the book of Samuel, although it is a very, very rich and important book. Any time that there is such a major shift and a major transition from one system to the other, it's important for us. Because we're living in a world that everything changes very fast. We're living in a constant transition. Politically, culturally, economically, spiritually. We're in a world that is changing very fast as a result of the technological and scientific developments in our world. In a hundred years, uh, the human existence has changed so much. First of all, with transportation, beginning with the steamship and then the train and then the internal combustion engine and then the airplane and then uh, the technology of, of, uh, of computers and cell phones has changed our world dramatically far beyond where we can even begin to assess, to assess, I mean, the importance and the effects of these technological, medical, scientific developments are going to bring to the human race. So that's why I chose to teach the book of Samuel. I don't know how many lessons there are going to be. I will go as slow or as fast as I am led to go. But I want to start with uh, a statement of one of the important books of the Mishnah, and that is the sayings of the fathers start like this. Moses received the Torah from Sinai. 
and he handed it to Joshua. And Joshua handed it to the elders. And the elders handed it to the prophets. This scale is important. There is constant changes in the authority and in the legacy of God's word. And Samuel is the first of those classical prophets because we have uh, records in writing of his uh, life, from the beginning of his life. Now, the book of Samuel starts in Shiloh. Shiloh is the first center of worship for the 12 tribes of Israel. It is in the territory of Ephraim, north of Jerusalem and north of Bethel, on the main highway that leads from the Galilee to Beersheba, on the crest of the mountains. The backbone of Israel is mountains at the very center of the land. Jerusalem, Hebron, Beersheba, Bethel, Shechem, Dothan, Nazareth are all on the same trajectory, on the same top of the mountains, the way of Samaria. And Bethel is in the middle of that backbone. No, sorry. It is, but Shiloh is just a little bit north of Bethel. So Shiloh is in the very middle of that backbone the central mountain range in the land of Israel. And the story of the book of Samuel starts with his birth. But Samuel, like all the other leaders in the history of Israel, his mother had problems giving birth. Look at him. Sarah had problems giving birth. Rachel had problems giving birth. Uh, Moses had problems surviving his birth. Uh, King David had problems in his birth. And Yeshua had problems in his birth. It builds from our mother's from Sarah and Rachel and on, and Rebecca, not only is Sarah and Rebecca and Rachel and so on, it builds up to the crescendo of an angel announcing to Mary and to Joseph that she's going to be pregnant and give birth to a male child. Now before we get into the text, I want to ask you this following question. Why is the story... Embre! Excuse me, somebody's calling. Yeah. 